Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Not long ago, I bought a Bugarium for my desk at work. Today, I'm going to tell you about the desert community of insects that I decided to keep in it. I'll explain about the setup, the species I chose, the care routine, and some observations I've made about my little desert community. I decided to keep a community of desert tenebrionid beetles and velvet ants, really fun creatures. As decor for the Bugarium, I collected dead sagebrush and some flat rocks near my home, right in the natural habitat of some of these beetles and the velvet ants. And for the background, I took a photo in the same area. I had an 8 by 11 inch print made of the photo and taped it on the back of the Bugarium. It fit really nicely. I didn't even need to trim it. The substrate is about an inch of Terra Sahara, a desert substrate from the Biodude Josh Halter. The light hood is an ExoTerra Nano with a 23 watt, 6500 Kelvin compact fluorescent bulb. I have four beetle species, five blue death feigning beetles, two black death feigning beetles, and three desert clown beetles. The death feigning beetles were purchased online from Bugs in Cyberspace and Arachnoboards, and the desert clown beetles were collected locally. All of these desert beetle species are very hardy and can live for many years. I also have two velvet ants. These were collected locally as well. Velvet ants are not ants at all, they're actually a type of wasp, the females of which are wingless. Velvet ants can live up to about two years in captivity. The care and feeding for this community is amazingly simple. All of these desert creatures like the substrate fairly dry. I can mist a bit in one corner once a week, but most of their water comes from their food. The beetles eat nearly anything. Veggies and fruit like carrots, cucumber, zucchini, dried mango, banana, apple, as well as other vegetable based items like dry oatmeal and chick mash. I also offer rapashi bug burger, fish food pellets, and for extra protein, dead crickets, which seem to be a real favorite. They go nuts over the crickets. And a do-it-yourself beetle jelly I've been trying out based loosely on a recipe I will put in the description. The velvet ants eat mostly the beetle jelly and juicy fruits like split grapes, as well as honey diluted with water at a ratio of about one part honey to six parts water. And surprisingly, they'll even nibble on cucumber. I've learned that I don't really like to use the honey mixture I mentioned, because the beetles go after it as well, and they get very sticky, which they don't seem to appreciate. It also means that I need to wipe down the lower inch of glass, as the beetles will smear the glass with sticky, dirty feet. I'll continue experimenting with the agar-based homemade beetle jelly, and we'll probably be making a video about that in the near future. I have the light on a timer for about 8 or 9 hours a day, with a brief siesta period in the afternoon. I'm still trying to discover how lighting might affect the activity levels of the inhabitants of this community. The beetles are really funny. They're kind of ponderous and tortoise-like in their movements. The clown beetle species seem a little more active earlier in the day than the death feigners, but any and all species can be and often are active during the day at times. Based on my observations while I had this set up at home for a month or two, afternoons and evenings seem to be prime time for all of the beetles so I may decide to bring some or all of them home after all, so I can enjoy their activity at its peak, because I'm not in my office in the evenings. When I need to remove the beetles from the enclosure for whatever reason, the death feigners certainly live up to their name. The blues are better at remaining convincingly still, whereas the blacks, which are actually more of a dark blue most of the time, live up to their nickname of pop and lock beetles. The velvet ants are often like little hummingbirds, extremely active, scurrying around the vivarium all day, although they sometimes go through periods during which one or the other will hide for days at a time. I'm still trying to figure that out. Velvet ants can climb glass, and will also climb on the screen upside down. At first, both velvet ants would hide when I approached the vivarium, but the big one seems to have learned not to fear me for the most part, and I hope the little one eventually does too. I got the idea of keeping velvet ants with my beetles from Peter at Bugs in Cyberspace. He keeps multiple velvet ants with mixed species of tenebrionid desert beetles very successfully. Check out his video in the card above, or in the description. I should mention here that while the beetles are quite harmless and can easily be handled if needed, 
The velvet ants can deliver a painful sting. They're not aggressive, and I've never been stung, but they're definitely worthy of respect. Certainly not good candidates for handling. When I need to move them, I just use a deli cup and a lid. I've seen some beetle larvae in the enclosure. You can see some small ones zipping around in the substrate in this time-lapse video if you look closely. And here is a much larger larva. I'm not sure which species the larvae are yet. It appears that I have two male and three blue death feigners, and I know I have a male and female pair of the unidentified Eleotis species, the smaller one. Hopefully time will tell. Apparently blue death feigning beetles need to be kept alone at warm temperatures when they reach the mature larval stage in order to be able to pupate successfully. It's been a few months now, and I've found this to be a fascinating insect community that's simple to care for. If you're looking for some extremely easy pets that provide variety and interesting activity, a community of desert tenebrionid beetles and velvet ants just might be for you. Thanks for watching. My videos are all about aquarium and vivarium pets. I post a new video every Friday. Let me know in the comments what you think about my desert community vivarium. Please rate this video, share it with someone who might like it, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos. When a rattlesnake is threatened, it rattles. When a velvet ant is threatened, it stridulates. And this is what it sounds like. Thank <laughs> you.